Hey guys, what's up? This is Rapid, and I am bringing you round one action. Actually, I believe this is round two, because both teams had a buy. And so this is going to be Team Mines of Moria, which we saw last week in the uh, in go for lol 48 I believe. And uh, yeah, they went really far and wound up eventually losing to Goose. But they are up against the Team Internal Error in the second round of go for lol number 49 bracket this is the 12th of february so we're gonna see all of these uh these guys get uh get into the action right away both teams are kind of vying for position right around this area in river if i can go ahead and do introductions we have blasphemy it's going top lane on yorick graves being played by sparta going bot lane god mid on vladimir kilvion in the jungle on nocturne and galio being played mid by Oi Br Hue Hue Hue. So I'm going to be saying that name as much as humanly possible just so I can laugh like a Brazilian. But uh, anyways, uh, let's go over the uh, the other guys which you may not know. You know, we have Steward or Stu Rad. I'm just going to call him Steward or just Stu the whole game. Maokai in the jungle. N-Z-X-E-R. These guys just trying to make my life like real rough for me right now. But uh, Misfortune going by Jello, Musky Bad, and Rival. So Rival, probably the easiest to pronounce name there. I'm just going to go with that as much as humanly possible. But uh, some epic skin action going on there. Some massive skin intimidation. Excellent help on those wolves right there. Getting each one of them down so, so low. Maokai instantaneously takes raids. And uh, that is just the strength of playing Maokai in the jungle. Uh, if we can go ahead and look at... Uh, yeah, Blue just now spawning for both players. Now kind of get, going to get there a little bit slower as he is so slow at walking through the jungle. Cloth 5 for Nocturne and for Maokai we have Regen Pendant. So he's going to go with that GP5 jungling uh, kind of champion that uh, St. Vicious was so instrumental in popularizing. Top lane is going to be Galio versus Riven. I don't really know how this works. I'm going to guess it goes in Riven's favor because, you know, Galio... Uh, has to, you know, stack that magic damage. Already Rival trying to get an advantage. Gets a lot of damage done, but uh, the quick auto attack there from Galio is enough to tie things up a little bit. We do have, oh my goodness, this is so, like, European meta, I guess you would say. MF has been kind of having a resurgence. She is that single target chunker. And uh, we have a couple of, like, really, really unusual supports bottom lane. Uh, word there for uh, Minds of Moria. CV is going to go off, which I yeah, believe they are running CV on New York. No, that was not their CV. It was the CV from Jello over there. Yeah, so it's going to be support York versus support Nunu. And if you had uh, been playing this game a couple months ago, you'd be like, hello, what? Where are these people from? Like, how does this even work? But, uh, yeah, it's a little bit more standard. I've seen us support York a couple times. And uh, it's really good at harassing. You have pretty much infinite sustain, infinite harass, as long as you build something uh, really mana heavy, and uh, that's what supports do with that uh, fairy charm. Rival actually a little bit lower in health than Oibr, who doesn't even have Bulwark yet, so that's really impressive. He's able to just uh, pop a couple of his potions, and uh, yeah, Riven is behind a potion, should probably go ahead and use that, but probably wants to wait until they go ahead and trade to start popping that potion. It's, it does give you that so much more effective HP, and right now Galio is actually CSing under turret, so a good job there from Riven, forcing his low 66 attack damage, but uh, where's the first action going to come off? Both junglers just settling for ganks. He's going to throw a sapling right there. Double buffs for both players. Yeah, for both junglers. And uh, Kilvion's just going to go back. Uh, and actually, no, he's just waiting there. He actually sees Riven pushing up a little bit. He's going to signal Galio to push up in the lane and may actually go up there. No, it looks like he will just go back. Maokai content to farm up in the jungle. But go ahead and check the gold count, which inevitably miss it means that I am missing something. We do see the Nocturne is at 1125, whereas Maokai is at, yeah, 1125, so both did the exactly identical jungle clear at pretty much exactly the same time. So, uh, what we're really going to see next is where they are going to gank, if it will be top or mid. Mid looks like it is going solidly in favor of Morgana. Morgana just maxing that pool first. Such a strong pushing champion, letting the minions and her auto attacks do the damage for her, and that is really the strength of a good AP mid. It's not your abilities that do the damage, you know, sure, if you can land them, great. It's the auto attacks after the trades that really, really set you far ahead. So we see Maokai coming down bot, he did pass over a ward there from Mines of Moria, so he's going to be trying to go in here and get any sort of 
Bind off instantaneously hits Nocturne, but the flash away after the Ignite goes down on Misfortune. The flash away from Stewart as well, so he's gonna have to flash out as Ignite was burned there. Heal is going off as well. Jello getting really low. Nixer getting really low as well. Kelvin will pick up the first kill. Will Jello go down as well? No, he is too far under turret. And that is first blood going to Mines of Moria, so already well on their way to uh, taking this game to a uh, the next round. But actually, yes, yeah, Sparta. Picking up Stuart as uh, they just troll around there with such low health. Blasphemy is so instrumental in uh, just uh, facilitating all those kills as he is still full health having maxed that lifesteal minion. Actually, no, he maxed slow minion first to uh, facilitate those ganks. Top lane, I don't know if I like this. Only BR, wah, 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 out of potions, out of mana. But Riven gonna... Yeah, sorry about that, guys. But Riven gonna recall first, so... Really interesting uh, game shaping up here in the favor of Mines of Moria. However, mid lane and top lane both look like they are having a little bit of an issue. Gallia is going to be forced to go back really fast. And yeah, it looks like uh, mid is, uh, as far as the CS is concerned, is 34 to 32, 33. So yeah, dead even mid, but uh, no more pots for Vladimir. Whereas that uh, spell vamp sitting at, what, 25%, 10% level 1 or level 6 I suppose uh, for Morgana just sustaining her so much however she is out of mana right now that's why Doran's first is such a good build on Morgana because it gives you basically everything you need the extra AP scaling into giving you extra health because you start out with that passive spell band if we go ahead and check her uh, character card we can see that she has yeah just 10% uh, utility stream not really worth specking into to get that extra spell vamp off because uh, the offense tree is just so so good Malka actually coming around behind Sparta. They did not have that warded and a major, major problem. He's going to go on to Sparta. I don't think that was the right choice. Sparta can dash out of there and blast me. Yeah, just going to get harassed a little bit. Content to walk in there. He knows that Nocturne is waiting in the wings. He's only level 5. Is he almost level 6? He just needs to get one more creep kill. Actually, the ward going off and the fear on to Steward. He is in trouble. They're pinging onto him. Morgana is actually going to come down and that will protect Steward from running away from that uh, unsuccessful gank bot lane so that is uh you know it's a little bit something you got to take what you can get uh, wasting the time of nocturne just kind of sitting down there for a while he's actually going to go take raids and a uh, really good warding here for ie as bulwark is uh, beginning to actually no he's maxing resolute smite so he's just going to go for maximum wave clearing and that's really all you need top is usually the farm lane I saw a really neat, neat uh, post by Dyrus on his Twitter, <laughs> and it was like, you know, which one of the lanes represents what. Blue going on to Morgana there. Top was like a picture of a wheat thresher for the farming lane. Mid had a di giant nuclear bomb, because that's where all the action went on, because, you know, they're both burst DAPs, and uh, probably the easiest lane to gank, because you can gank it from both sides. Well, we're going out, baiting for Nocturne. Kilvion, actually, wow, the old not in time. OIPR, wait, 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 just delaying that so, so, like, like by, by just like a fraction of a second. That was insane. If he had hit that, like, literally a second earlier, then Riven wouldn't have been able to flash away. He would have gotten feared inside the taunt, and that would have just been so much CC. Plus, the, the uh, taunt would have gone off from Galio. That's uh, Idol of Duran. Shout out to Zeris. Is, uh, would, would have been able to do so much damage there, and might have been able to pick up the kill. Blasphemy, uh, picking up the warding. Four Mines of Moria, and uh, wow, level 7 already has a Hextech and Boots, so Vladimir is going to start to get a little bit ridiculous right now. Morgana does have blue buff, and already with double Dorans, uh, it's a little bit of an interesting build. I would have gone Dorans first into, you know, Boots, and then another ring, but, uh, you know, she doesn't, she knows what she's doing. She's in this tournament, and I am not, so I'm going to trust her professional judgment. Wow, that cannon minion took one for the team right there. Uh, he, uh, he didn't know what was going on. But uh, yeah, OBR wait, 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 actually really needs to get some sort of mana regen as a chalice, so that's going to set his mana regen ridiculously high right now. If we check his MP5, it's already at 37 with only a uh, chalice that gives you 7.5, but also 1% per every other percent. It's an okay item. Uh, Galio, one of the only champions that can really make use of it, the other one being Vagar, but honestly, if you get it on Vagar, then you know, you're just kind of bad because that's what his passive's for. It's like a mini chalice. But uh, ever since they buffed his mana and mana regen costs and whatever, he uh, he's pretty good. Doesn't need anything like that. Galio having to go back for the second time, actually picking up just a ward and some ninja tabi. So 
Riven's gonna go back, already has double Dorans, and her build, as she is just cooldown focused, doesn't have to worry about that mana resource. Is actually, wow, she's just gonna pick up, uh, yeah, some Merc Treads. So both players getting boots to counter each other. Top lane really just about being so defensive that you can just stay up there and farm for, well, basically days. Stewart's gonna walk over a uh, ward there for Mines of Moria mid, and uh, Ward the Tri Brush, that's been kind of his warding pattern. He and Morgana are actually gonna herp their derps along this way. They find G.O.D. walking down, but uh, the the midget is not in place. He's going to stay there really lonely, just waiting to explode into a lonely box of loneliness. The spell shield is good enough to block the ult, but so much CC going up there on Maokai. Killbeon is actually really low, but the ult going down. Will Killbeon actually go down? He's going to get out of there alive. So much damage going down by Graves, but uh, Steward taking so much of that damage. Meanwhile, the exhaust going down. Musky Bad picks up G.O.D. The flashover. Do we see an ult? They actually, the ult from Nunu is going to go off. There's not enough. Actually catches MF in that too. The explosion is not good enough to pick up IE. Will he actually go down? Sparta is getting so low. He just needs to pick up one of them. There are such low health. Blasphemy is going to come in here. He's going to be able to get something out. He has the ignite. He has the ulted graves. So two graves right here. Is it going to be enough to pick up Stuart? The ult going in from Doctor. Able to pick up that kill. He dies for it though. So one for one right there. Three to two. Still the kill advantage. Four Minds of Moria, and oh my goodness, this game is shaping up to be intense. But meanwhile, Rivals just said, Yo, dog, I can take turrets like a boss because you're actually not here for, well, basically forever. So, Galio finally going to make his way up the top lane, and if we see the CS discrepancy, is already up by 30 CS, so that Riven's going to get really scary really fast. Already has a ridiculous amount of gold. Actually, only 450, so... Probably went back and uh, bought, yeah, had those uh, those Merc Treads, they were hella expensive. Not quite on the same level as, uh, as Ninja Tabai. Sorry, I was, thinking, I was gonna say Dodge Boots, and I was like, Derp, they don't dodge anymore, so I definitely need to remedy that. And uh, Galio actually running away, not what you really want to do. He actually misses Resolute Smite and blows the cooldown on Bulwark, too, so... Oh, be our way, way, way. It's just going to have to like chill out and try to clear some waves right now. He is coming out ahead because of that uh, bulwark actually just taking you know, any damage at all. Heals him up so, so much. Maokai is going to actually give red to Ribbon. I love this so much. You've really seen junglers with the advent of the new jungle just start farming so much gold off of those small creeps that they've been more of an assisting role. Giving the buffs to top and mid, but uh, wow, MF going in there, chugging Blasphemy so hard. He actually might go down here. Two Nuna, one more auto attack, yes. Jello will pick up the kill. I think the MF dot might have picked that up, but uh, no. Musky Bad's actually going to double ward that as that ward just now dying. So uh, good, uh, good ward timing there. Mixer picking up G.O.D. as well, and if I'm not mistaken, yeah, that's 2-1. And the first dragon of the game for IE right now, so... What used to be an advantage for Minds of Moria just turned around there after they did not have very much uh, cohesion as a team going in there to mid. So Musky Bad is actually going to pick up his second blue of the game. And uh, blues on Morgana is basically all she needs, are basically all she needs to dominate her lane. Riven's come down after pretty much doing everything he possibly could do top lane. Galio opting to pick up a, a Ruby Crystal? He, I guess, Rod of Ages? I don't know about that. Uh, maybe going for a little bit more of a tankier Kindle Gem build. But uh, yeah, Rival and Musky Bat are going to be able to take down this mid turret if they so choose. They may actually leave that up with one hit point just so they can take it a later date. No, they do go ahead and take that down. And that is a 14 minute turret for IE. So, internal error. Apparently not having too many areas this time around. They are on top of their warding. Look at all that warding from them. They basically have the entire river warded on both sides, even having one there as well. One of the things I've been seeing a lot of pro teams doing is pinking that area. And, ah, wow, actually misses the, uh, the stun. Ult goes off, Ignite goes off. Wait, be our way, 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 ulting for, like, a split second, but, uh, gets stunned immediately. He will go down, and Rival picking up that kill. Rival right now looking a little big as 101 farms, so only on the level of Graves. Misfortune actually not farming very well at all but already has two kills, so a kill is worth eh, about two or three waves of minions, depending on, you know, cannon waves or whatever. But the top tower is now going to go down, and this is two towers for IE, and they're way ahead in the gold count. 
Yeah, this is what happens when Kingdoms of Amalur comes out and you have to buy it and play it for days on end. But uh, anyways, Nunu's actually going to go back. He picked himself up a kill and already has his first GP5. Not going for that traditional Velo Stone first, but probably will be able to pick this up here unless he goes for just, you know, massive amounts of wards. Muskybat's going to go back after taking that top turret. Nothing quite yet. He's probably just, you know, waiting. There we go. Velo Stone picked up, but actually, oh my goodness, if he doesn't pick up wards, that is so bad. You really want to be able to buy wards, and if you get greedy, then... Yeah, okay, buys a couple wards, and so good support is good. I'm okay with that, which, you know, doesn't really matter, because I'm not the people playing in this game. I always like to emphasize, like, some casters will be like, well, I don't really like that this professional player made the made this uh, decision. So, let me uh, respond real fast. Uh, five minutes. I may have to actually go and uh, leave this game unconcluded, but hopefully this will serve to help both teams realize what they did well and what they did not do well. Stewart's actually going to go through mid. Already has an Oracle, so those double GP5s paying off extremely effectively. So much gold per five. And actually shielding Maokai, he's going to go Rambo mode way deep in the enemy jungle, and they're just trolling around here. They're going to go actually behind Sparta. Sparta does not know what's up. He, They have awarded every single ward, and he is so dead right now. There's absolutely nothing he can do. Actually, dodges the dark biting, so dashes through. Will he be able to get out? No, the ignite even coming down, so Muskybat picking up yet another kill. Three to six is the kills. Already up almost, uh, yeah, 2.5k gold at uh, 16 minutes into the game. And wow, this is absolutely incredible. I have not seen a team turn this around so subtly. It's just like, you know, each individual team wins their lanes and what's, you know, it's like, you know, win your game, lane, win the game, which is kind of what's happening right now. Um, five members, actually just four members, rival coming in there, gonna group up for what is gonna be the first team fight of the game. Galio's ult is currently off of cooldown so the ult going out there from Nunu they're gonna have to walk out of that it does not do almost any damage at all G.O.D. was able to get out of there unscathed they're just gonna back off they know they uh, they blew the Nunu ult they really have to back out and uh, they actually go uh, contest dragon right now Maokai's really low so probably not they're probably just going to uh, back off and go by so Uh, actually, if we see uh, positioning, both teams, yeah, probably, yeah, they are going to go back and buy, stock up their HP, and look to position around Baron as soon as both of them, uh, you know, get their prerequisite items. We see a lot of gold on Nocturne. He's kind of floating rich. Could go back and get a uh, Brutalizer, really good item on Nocturne as those cooldowns on his fear are so important. He's going to opt for the Giant's Belt instead, so he's looking to be really tanky, and uh, that's kind of the way you have to build Nocturne. If you build him all damage, you ult literally into the middle of absolutely every one of the enemy team, and then explode because you're in the middle of the enemy team, and you've just scared them all, so they're all going to focus you immediately. So you really have to build tank. So if you do build tank, then, you know, sure, that's less damage, but they're all focusing somebody who takes a long time to kill. Trying to coordinate so many first round go for law games, but uh, hopefully I can stick in this one a little bit longer. If these guys can wrap it up, that would be absolutely amazing, but I don't think we'll see that for a while. Both teams kind of uh, grouping up here. Trying to uh, both micromanage, cast, and also... Oh, wow, Nocturne, if he had had one more hit from Graves there, would have been able to kill that ward. You know, it's the small victories that are going to ca that are going to count. Also, uh, a small victory would be controlling my voice at any point during this cast. So... Um, So hard to spectate and uh, moderate at the same time, but uh, we're going to see Sparta actually moving there aggressively on Riven, and you know, that was really Riven's decision to, uh, to back off there. If she had wanted to turn around and 
start doing the damages. She definitely could have. This is a really interesting strategy. What you're going to do is you're going to position for blue, and if blue's up, well, it's actually not up, so that's actually really, really bad. But you position for blue, and then if you don't get blue... Then you just uh, go back and take your victory at Dragon. Oracles is out double pink, or actually just double wards in general. They are for IE, and this is probably going to be the team fight. If either team gets aced right now, it's probably going to be GG. There's already an advantage in gold and items. If you look, you can see Triple Dorian's Wriggles on Misfortune. Such a good build on her. There's really nothing really complete. You have a Woda on Vlad. Vlad is really the playmaker right now. The ult going off there. Double ult. We may see an Empire in reverse. The Vladimir ult goes down as well. Sparta will fall. Musky bad picking up that kill. So many deaths going down. Two down for Mize of Moria. Nunu gets out with sub negative zero HP. Vlad will finally fall. That is four dead for Mize of Moria. And it does not look like they may be uh, succeeding here. In the next round of the Go For All tournament, this could be their last and final moment. OIPR is going to try to clear this minion wave bot like Galio is so good at doing. Look at the killing so many minions, but still more are coming in. Here comes Rival to push this even harder into the turret. Uh, one of the hard things about Riven is she cannot wave clear without doing AoE and thus drawing turret aggro by hitting, you know, say something giant like, a, yeah, Galio. So he's actually going to go behind the turret, actually attacking it with no minions. So he's going to take a couple turret hits, which may, you know, weaken him for this next fight. This follow-up is going to be really crucial. If Mines of Moria can turn it around, then eh, we could see, uh, we could see, you know, one ace turn into, you know, a couple towers. But right now, no turrets having fallen for internal error. So their stability looks uh, pretty, pretty solid right now. I was about to say pretty stable, and I was like, derp, same word, but uh, anyways, mid push is uh, looking like it's going to come in there. I'm going to say this game is over. If this is, uh, if it, you know, a mad turnaround happens, I'll have to cast this replay, but uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully uh, it wasn't too big a loss, and I will talk to you guys later.